these few short seconds. <laughs> and also stop um, it again. Thank you. Um, so I've put a link in the chat to a document that just um, has some links in it to other documents that we're going to refer to throughout um, throughout the session. So anytime that we talk about the links, um, it, they should be in there. And if um, you are bringing up links um, for us to link to talk about, perhaps you could also share them in that document. That would be great. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, could somebody enable me to do that, please? Because I'm not a host. You're not able to. Sorry, did you say I'm now able to? Yeah. Great. Okay, so hopefully that's loading up for you now. Um, there should be a make branded slide. Um, if you can see that, then we're doing well. Um, so I've got a rough plan for the session from my perspective, um, but it's you know um, very much an informal session and I would love people to chip in whenever they have something to say. Um, and, you know, and we can go off in different directions if we if we need to and if we want to. Um, but the rough plan that I've got is to introduce the open catalogue of business models, which is this piece of work that we've done in the um, MAKE project, um, to share a bit about what our plans are to do with that next. Um, and I'd love any feedback around that and then discuss um, what we as gig would like to do on this topic it's something that um, you know there seems to be a lot of interest around um, in, in the topic and um, you know we've set up a little um, set up a whatsapp group on it we've as, as Fadia mentioned we've been doing this series of community discussions um, this year which are coming to an end with next week's discussion um, so you know what next um, what what should uh, the gig community um, be doing together on this topic um, and yeah just just jump in at any time please um, and do just feel free to unmute yourselves and, and jump in don't rely on me looking at um, um, hands up and things like that so um, to start off with I wanted to say a bit about um, what a business model is to me and why I think it's important. So um, a definition that I like is it describes the rationale of how an organization and organization can be loose. It doesn't need to be a formal registered entity. It can be a group of people doing something together. Um, how it creates, delivers and captures value. And um, maker spaces and I think many community organizations are really good at creating value and delivering value and often have a challenge in my experience with capturing value to enable them to keep going to keep doing the good work um, so that in a nutshell is why it's important to me um, I want to, to say up front that I personally think there is a really strong case for public funding of makerspaces and of many um, community enterprises. Um, and yet that's not happening anytime soon in much of the world and we can't wait for it. So the, you know, the need to have um, sustainability models um, to to be able to keep doing work is is important um, to work on um, but I also want to recognize that it's not without challenges um, so you know I think that many I think there's often too much emphasis on business models um, particularly from funders saying things like you know set, trying to set up a place and saying right you've got to have an ongoing business model it's not always practical it's not easy 
Um, and what we have to be really careful about is that some business models can detract from the good work that you were originally trying to do, um, or at least cause tension with it. Um, so, you know, it it's about so like if if there's a makerspace that is trying to serve you know the informal sector um that has very little money you know somebody could come in and say well your your business model should be membership and you should be charging this amount for membership but then you're only going to work with the people who can afford it and you know and that's not a good answer um so i think it's it's really important to think um i'm using the term business models um but I'm, they don't have to be for profit and they definitely shouldn't be at the expense of impact. Um, the, um, so I think a sustainability model is probably a better um, term for it, um, which then also captures some of the, um, some of the thoughts around environmental sustainability and social sustainability, which absolutely need to be built into the operating models um, of all of these type of, of projects. So um, that's a, a bit of a, a disclaimer at the beginning um, before we get into talking about business models. Um, in the MAKE project, we had the opportunity to do this um, fantastic piece of research. And in this presentation, I haven't got a list of all the people that we spoke to, the contributors, because there's too many and it wouldn't, you wouldn't fit on the slide. Um, but um, I really want to um, acknowledge um, all of the people who have given their time to to be interviewed. Um, we've spoken to about 50 um, different makerspaces and organizations, including many giggers. Um, now, because of the um, funding from gig, the majority were from either Africa or Europe, um, but I have you know, where there's been an opportunity, I've been interested to speak to people in other continents as well. So there's, there's sort of been a sprinkling of, um, of other um, input to this, but it has, because of the funding so far, the research was focused mainly on, on Africa and EU. Um, we are launching a website um, very soon, which I'll say a bit more about later, but the full list of contributors will be listed on credited on the website. Um, from all of those interviews that we did, we identified three groups of business models. Um, and I'm, I can also term them business model elements because we're not saying that any of these have to be the entire business model for a space. You can combine them in different ways to, to make up something that, that makes sense for a particular operation. Um, but the, the business models that we came across um, in the interviews were based around one of three things either the sharing of expertise so there's something that um, the people running the organization know about or know how to do that other people value or it's about sharing of assets so you either have or you create um, some kind of an asset that um, that other people value having access to and that can be a physical access like a physical asset like a machine or it could also be a less tangible asset like a community um, on the third group was uh, business models based around playing some role in product a product life cycle. So anything from designing, developing, manufacturing, um, quality control of making actual physical products. So those are the three groups. Um, I there is a link to the full catalog. Um, deliverable from the make project in that document that I posted in the chat at the start um, so I'm not going to go through these in massive detail I just wanted you to have a sort of a view of what kind of information is in that catalog so under the expertise sharing group we've got training we've got ed events and edutainment we've got consultancy we've got business services and startup support then under asset sharing, we've got space rental, which is like a long-term use of space. We've got space hire for short-term use. Uh, we've got machine access. We've got membership um, 
and we've got creating some kind of a marketplace where you're enabling buyers and sellers of something to to come together and, and find each other um, and examples of that range from you know a physical market place so um uh, motive in uganda who we had on one of the um, business models discussions um it ha run actual markets so that artisans that they're working with can um sell their products um through to it can be like a, a skills marketplace um or, or something like that so you're enabling um uh, people who want a particular service to find people in your community who are able to offer that service so and um there were some um, great companies that we met in South Africa um, doing that kind of thing. Um, so the third group then is around the product life cycle. And um, as I said, playing some role in terms of making physical products um, from sale of materials. And those do not have to be new materials. Um, they can be selling um, uh donated reused materials so the first makerspace that i was involved in is um the remakery in south london and um one of the business models that it uses is to um take donations of like unused um construction um, materials and things like that store them and then sell them for a very small affordable price to people who can use those in, in their projects or in their homes or, or whatever. Um, product development, um, so actual design and prototyping of, of new products, product manufacturing, um, so making products under your own name, manufacturing as a service where you're um, basically somebody else is doing the marketing of the product and, and the designing but you're just offering the manufacturing service um quality control is uh, is is an experimental one um it's one that we've been testing in um, a project called um innovative manufacturing in africa and there's um, a report coming out on that uh in about a month i think um but we were examining like whether we can get items made in different places and then make a spaces perform a role of quality checking that before it goes to a, a user. Um, repair, um, so maintaining products or, or returning them into use um, and recycling, so um, processing end of life products or industrial waste. And it's also important to note that um, they can be other circular economy models built into any of these in the product life cycle. So when I say product manufacturing, you know, using a precious plastics machine to create um, coasters that you sell to somebody is product manufacturing. Um, it's, you know, all of these can be, um, can be using um, materials that have, you know, that are not virgin. Um, so those are the three groups of models we've got. And then there are 17 um, models in those three groups. And in the catalog, each model um, has two pages in the PDF version, which is what I've linked to in the chat document, um, which contains this. So there's um, a an overview of the model. Um, so description, major variations, a bit about some potential impacts that you could be looking for if you wanted to work with this, that kind of thing. Um, suggestions of other models that can work well and then the second page is using the business model canvas format um, to describe things like the partners the activities the um, relationships um, so that's what the content looks like um, just to give you a quick example I'm only going to show you one of them but for training which is one that hopefully everyone's is familiar with this is what the information actually looks like so it describes what we mean by training um, it gives some of the major variations so in this case you know offering training in person versus online has quite different implications in terms of your cost structure for example like if you want to train a lot of people in one room you have to have a big room but if you want to do it online you don't need that um, talking about the potential impact, so some of the reasons you might do this and what are the advantages of using this as a business model, what are some of the challenges, and then suggesting other models that can work well with it. 
So for example, space hire, because if you are doing in-person training, if you've got a big training room, you're not, if you're not doing training in it all the time, then can you hire it out um, for either other people to do training in or, or something completely different for weddings or something, you know, when you're not actually using um, the space. So um, I did mention briefly earlier, we're developing a website um, and in with that, you'll, it'll be, the navigation will become much more natural and you'll be able to sort of click through to the, you know, it's suggested complementary models um, um, and, you know, and see all of the information on one page and things like that. So, and then this is the second page um, from the PDF document, which is the, the business model canvas. Um, it, um, and yeah, I mean, it's a, standard format it's the same information each place and we're also going to be linking to resources that people can use to learn more about that format so um i'm talking a lot do remember what i said about just jump in if you have any questions or comments um or um anything like that um, but in the absence of that, I'll carry on and just say a bit about how we see the catalogue being used. Um, so it's intended to be a source of inspiration. It's it's not going to ever be able to say what will work in what context or in what community. Um, but it can be a source of ideas. And, you know, as we get um, more information into it, it'll hopefully provide some guidance on the types of situations where it's likely to work. Um, as I mentioned briefly before, the elements in the catalogue can be combined in different ways to, um, to build up the model that works um, for a particular space or, or organisation. Um, and they're always going to need to be adapted. Um, it, it's not a sort of take a template off a shelf and apply it. It's very much um, a prototyping approach is, is always going to be needed. Um, and, you know, as makers, we should be um, very experienced that do that, but we um, we need to learn from what we're doing, adjust it and, and you know, build variations based on that. So I'm the only one on the call today, but I want to make sure that my co-authors of the catalogue get full credit as well. That's Martin Olo and Gertrude Nainago, um, both of whom are members of GIG. Um, and um, so just to move on and talk to you a bit about the plans going forward from this. So um, also under the MAKE programme, we've been able to do a small mentoring programme, um, which is running at the moment. We are working with um, three maker spaces, one in Germany, one in Cameroon, one in Zimbabwe, um, to help them to to support them through a process of like examining their current operations selecting a new business model from the catalog to um iterate on and, and try implementing um and you know and see what lessons are learned from that um and this is to enable us i mean obviously it's to support the spaces in doing that but it's also to enable us to understand better how the catalog can be used and how to improve it you know so that it becomes easier to use so that's going on now it started in october and it's running till april next year and we will be writing case studies about that and, and sharing them um translations so we're working with um the ukrainian maker association to get it translated into ukrainian um we are having some conversations about getting it translated into french um hopefully with the, in partnership with um, APSOHA and the uh, network of um, Francophone makerspaces of West Africa. Um, and I would love to hear from anybody else who's got suggestions as to what, you know, what languages we should be a priority for us to try and get it translated into, anyone who wants to work with us um, on, on translating it into, into their language. 
Um, we have the website um, in process. Um, I was really hoping I was going to be able to give you a preview of it today, but it's not quite um, there. Um, we are launching it next week. And in that document that I shared in the chat, there is a link to register for the launch event, which is being hosted by the um, Internet of Production. Um, and that's next Tuesday. So we're going to be um, showcasing the, the there. Um, it's called localeconomies.org. Uh, you can also um, sign up for the mailing list for that if you like. Um, just like the uh, the catalogue that was um, that's been published under the Make project, everything on the website will be um, under a Creative Commons license, CC by SA. Um, it's really important to me that um, this can be used as widely as possible, that people can do what they like with it. Um, uh, and, you know, I'm very interested in in seeing how, where that goes. And I'd love to know about any derivative um, works from it so that we can link to them and, and celebrate them and provide, you know, additional resources for people who are interested in this kind of thing. Um, a few of the things that we are so to start with, the website is going to be um, the same content as the, um, the catalogue that was delivered under Make, um, more or less. Um, just with new ways of, of presenting the information and navigating it. And we're then going to be adding to it um, with different uh, examples, um, some case studies and, and links to additional resources and, and things like that. Um, the funding for the website um, came under the uh, RISA programme, um, which is ultimately funded by UK International Development. Um, so that's that's the end of the presentation um, that I've got for you today. Um, I would love now to have a conversation about, um, you know, what else we should be doing. Um, and so the first link in the that document that I keep talking about that was in the chat is to a jam board, which I'm going to navigate to now. Um, but just while I'm doing that, perhaps can I just ask for any any comments or reactions, please? Hey Anna, I hope and everybody, I hope you can hear me. Just barely. Okay, I'll try to speak up a little bit. So sorry. Um, thank you so much. This is brilliant work you've presented. I just wanted to come in and say, well, there's so much to say to reflect on. The brilliant categorization that you did and how we've learned the hard way the last years what a necessary mix uh spaces need to be resilient of these different kind of models i just wanted to say that gig is of course very interested in and it's currently also very engaged in finding follow-up funding to the make project and if there are members of gig who would be interested to keep working with this um, as you said, Anna, perhaps in translating or localizing, then we, of course, would be happy to be a sparing partner to look for funding for this. And uh, yeah, hope yeah, hope you can hear me. That's it. Amazing. Yeah, thank you, Geraldine. And I'm gonna. Um put that I know you're um, on the move so um, you're probably on mobile but I'm going to add that as a sticky onto the, the Jamboard um, um, under what I'm on uh, my laptop on the train so I, I can write into the Jamboard okay perfect perfect um, yeah so I'm um, very keen um, to, to work with um, anyone who's passionate about this subject um, to, you know, to find ways to continue the work. Um, and yeah, we'll do whatever I can to support that. So yeah, I um, love hearing that. Thank you. So the questions I've got on, on the Jamboard are, um, how can we make the catalogue better? Um, and, you know, to make it more useful, more um, obviously, the, the website is intended to 
be a step in that direction to make it more user friendly. Um, but, you know, we're also thinking about how to make it easier to try and easier to go through the process of turning from what a somewhat abstract business models to, you know, something real and tangible in the um, in the spaces. Um, what should we do? There may be people we should speak to, um, you know, any ideas you've got at all. Um, the uh, Geraldine, you've got your hand up. You want to come in? Yeah, Anna, sorry. So one more quick message question, which I'm not sure if we talked about and probably I just forgot, but will the RISA website, um, when you click through the models, would they also link to cases uh, and perhaps link up to certain maker spaces? Does it make sense to connect this with the map that we have of members or IOPA in any way? Is that something that makes sense to think about? That definitely makes sense to think about. Um, yeah, I really like that. Um, so at the moment, um, yeah, we're, we're working on um, developing some case studies to include in it. Um, the, the GDPR terms under which we did the whole original set of interviews were that we wouldn't name specific spaces um, other than in a list saying, you know, crediting people for their participation. Um, so we wouldn't be saying this makerspace does this. But what we are planning to do is kind of select some of the interesting examples and go back to people and ask if they would be willing to work with us to do a, a named case study um, where we can kind of document, you know, this is what this particular space is doing um, and this is how they do it. Um, and yeah, it would absolutely make sense to, to connect that to the map. I love that idea. So thank you. Uh, great. Uh, I'll just comment sorry. in the chat now, but that sounds great. We'd love to see how we can support. Thanks, Geraldine. Ricardo, were you coming in there? Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll change my background. All right. Uh, I like very much the idea of the mentoring program and how can we replicate it. Uh, and for example, not only at Makerspace, but some design schools around the road, you know, connection to some design schools so we can provide this, or administration schools, this kind of situation where we can provide some reference and mentoring programs together, you know? I, I like very much the idea of mentoring programs, especially if we think about Implementing the Global South, you know, mentoring program would be the best, easiest and fastest way to go because we can translate and people will see it, but to have the practice, it's much better, right? Yeah, I definitely agree with you on that, um, Ricardo. Um, could I just ask you to say a little bit more about the link to design schools? I'm not sure I followed you on that. Yeah, for example, there's one NGO here that is a designer school at the same time, regular one. I'm, I'm sharing the link on the chat. Thank so, you. for example, Okumasi Hive, that is, you know, at the same time, an NGO and a design school or a maker school, not only a maker space, you know, where we can share this mentoring program to more people willing to make organizations like students, you know, ah, students, okay. accelerators, um, out of the grid design schools, you know, indigenous youth groups and this, this kind of educational design, whatever, you know? Okay. So, so kind of, um, this is just put it in my own words to, to reflect back to if I've understood you. It's like to try and target the people who are likely to become the social entrepreneurs who will set up um, exactly. sort of organizations. Yeah. Exactly. I, I love your words. <laughs> yeah, that's an awesome idea. Thank you. I really love the fact that there are post-its appearing all over the place. Um, that's that's brilliant. Is there anyone else, who, anyone who'd like to 
to chip in and just tell us a bit about what they're writing down. Anna, sorry, me, oh, sorry, Eric first. No, please, Geraldine, go ahead. Um, I was just going to ask, would it be possible to, on the RISA website, or is this something we could think about on the gig website or somewhere else, to have a a kind of add your story, add your business model, add your, you know, points on this to make it a bit of an open collective thing that potentially could grow with people adding to it in future? <clears throat> That's a really interesting idea. Yeah. See how we can build on that. So the, the website is under development at the moment, doesn't have that functionality. Like we didn't go for a kind of wiki approach. Um, um, I did spend quite a bit of time thinking about it. And, you know, I'm, there were a lot of, there were pros and cons on both sides and I'm not sure if we have come down the right side or not. Um, but um, I, you know, I definitely do want to find ways that we can include, um, yeah, as many different um, options as possible. So, yeah, I'll just, have you captured that already somewhere, Geraldine, or should I? I'm writing on the whiteboard, Jamboard. Thank you very much. Um, Eric, I think you wanted to come in next, did you? Yeah, just an idea. I just put the link in the in the Zoom chat, and I can put it over on the board. But I'm on, I'm on my phone here. Um, it's to this community network readiness assessment handbook, which is it's a wonderful resource written by one of our colleagues uh, that's working with UNICEF now. But the point is not the handbook itself; it's this uh, Excel spreadsheet that they've pre-configured for people who want to start networks. And I would employ you all to read this, uh, it's called the techno-economic tool to complete the finance workbook. Uh, but they've basically, they have it so you can fill in the blanks and then it will kind of uh, help you with your business model. It'll help you with your initial, running your initial numbers. And I just, this popped into my head as you were showing us uh, those three different categories and then the different business models they're in. Like if each of the business models had sort of a tool, it doesn't have to be as robust as this one, um, where people can kind of plug in the numbers, uh, you know, it, maybe it could become a, a valuable resource. That's it. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yes, I um, would definitely be keen to to have that kind of, um, to, to start creating those kind of templates that people can use to make it easier to implement. Um, and yeah, um, I'll have a look at that and see if we can link to that or, or whether it needs to be customized or whatever. Brilliant. Thank you. So, uh, Anna, just to point because yesterday on yesterday's session on habit diversity, we had the same idea as Geraldine to create a repository because you have the hub in a box, is a repository of tools, many tools that everyone knows that work on this thing, but. We are trying to think in a repository of tools used by the gig community, you know, like mm -hmm. our tools, different tools, and bring this diverse box of tools, you know. And so one more session for the same thing, you know, a common objective. Excellent. Yeah, brilliant. No, that's that sounds great. Um, I think. Um, I think collecting these kind of tools together in one place really makes sense. And um, perhaps there's a way to also link that to the um, the makerspace, the open makerspace toolkit that's being developed um, by um, Mboa Lab and AppSoha in, in the Make project. Amazing. <laughs> There's a post-it here that says sustainable communities after one-time funding. Um, I'd love to, to learn a bit more about who had that thought and what it is. Uh, yeah, hi, Anna. So uh, I'm just brief. So yeah, I've written that. So 
it's about that uh, uh, once the funding is there with the uh, with the maker space or any uh, any uh, hub so it's like it is very important that it should be sustainable i mean like uh, that uh, for new projects and development of, of course we need some funding but uh, for for the current project if you develop some projects so it is very important that after one time funding it should be sustainable it should be self owned kind of stuff so and that is applicable to everything like small society like eric said that community network so community network is just like okay one time funding can be given for the infrastructure cost and the device cost but then community should maintain itself and uh, it should uh, get out some uh, funds itself uh, that can be self governed and self maintained so that's the point i'm just mentioning that uh, it should be uh, like uh, that current project if we do anything so it should be sustainable so that's very important absolutely yeah i agree with you um very important challenging but very important but Thanks yeah so th that's what we <laughs> that's what initiated to a discussion that okay let's do brainstorming and how this challenge can be accepted and then overcome that's important yeah. so i mean that's th that challenge that you're naming there is is really the the sort of driving problem behind the um behind the catalogue that's that's why we've um tried to create this it's and it's um you know obviously only a small step in, in the direction but it's trying to um collect and share you know what's already happening um in a yeah, way so that, that uh, hopefully we can share to implement uh, yeah we can share our uh, learning and experiences with each other so that uh, the, those who have done some sustainable things so that can be shared with the community of others as well so that that challenge can be overcome. Some of the things are there. So I think it's better when we have some uh, some documents or some site where we can discuss and uh, share our experiences then we can learn from your because the problem or challenge might be same everywhere. So and somebody yeah. has worked on the challenge and find out some solution. I think it will be better that that solution will be discussed with each and everyone in the other community so that they can also be sustained. So that's what uh, is the main purpose of collaboration. That's what gig is. So we share and you know uh, we collaborate. So that's uh, very important. Yeah. So uh, no, I, d I definitely definitely agree with that. Um, and so we are. Um, in the sort of functionality of the website that's being built at the moment, um, you know, it will be people will be able to comment on things like leave comments, um, including linking to other things. Um, and I guess there are two other places I can think of that the that kind of ex exchange can happen. So there's the the gig WhatsApp group, um, the business and sustainability one that we can use to kind of keep developing the conversation and, and figure out what we want to do with it um and one option um that we could also look at if it needs a more sort of structured um place to uh, online um conversation place is is that we could create a section in the internet of production forum um for this uh, conversation i think that could also could also work um but yeah, I'm, I'd also love to hear what other ideas you've got about how how to make sure that we we continue this sharing. Yeah, I think uh, so. Uh, WhatsApp group is like one of the uh, good thing to start with, and as Eric and Geraldine also mentioned about that working groups that are really very important. And I think let's start with that. That I. <laughs> believe that that's the best way to collaborate and start with so that uh, the groups can be very focused on what we are just thinking so i think that might help us yeah that's great sure look forward thank you great thanks who else would like to come in
just reading some of these other um other post-its there's some really great suggestions in here um i mean obviously we can continue this con discussion in the the whatsapp group as well um but you know is it so is it a topic we should be looking to have calls on like you know we've been having the community discussions um but they're coming to an end but you know should we replace that with something um should there be you know monthly or or every other month calls where you know a couple of different people from the gig community share what their models are or something like that you know should there be or you know or or less structured it could just be a, a conversation group you know should we be looking to create something like that i think that's a really great question anna um and i would also love to hear thoughts on this perhaps again specifically especially members outside of Europe and Africa, if there's, because the sessions we've had did focus a lot on people that you interviewed, of course, but also included sometimes people from different regions um, coming in. So I think it'd be great to think about if should like expand that in the bigger geographical scope, or if there are other sharing sessions that people would feel valuable around this topic. Yeah, so this is a topic that, that Fadia and I have had some conversations on as, you know, what should, should we replace the um, community discussions with something else, but um, we haven't got any conclusions yet, but yeah, we need some, some wider input. Um, but in terms of um, including models from outside Europe and Africa, um, I'm very keen to continue um, interviewing people and, you know, to take that information and build it into the catalogue, um, either as part of the overall catalogue or if people are willing, you know, for actual named case studies. Um, so if any of you on the call are um, are interested in in taking part in something like that, there's I've put a table at the bottom of the um, that document that I've linked. Um, if you could leave your details in there, then I can contact you about it. Kirsten. Uh, just uh, while I reboot as I connect, but no, thanks so much, Anna, of course, for all the hard work and everything you've put into this. And um, Fadia and myself and Chima also discussed a bit this morning about really thinking about 2024 and how to take the work that you've done in the business models to the next stage. And I think this is a really nice segue to sort of think what, what could we talk about in those contexts and maybe we can even put out a, you know, a call to the gig community to say, you know, which do we now feature a regional content like Saad put in that he'd be interested um, to be interviewed and things like that. So maybe we can take it further and do sort of almost like a, not compatibility, but see where, where this, the cases have been used or would be beneficial. So that's maybe more in the longevity of the project or what just Breed was saying for the sustainability that we show that it's maybe implemented in Singapore, just using one example, or it could be, you know, but but using that to tie it back to make, but maybe the post make kind of concept. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. So one of the functionalities that we've implemented in the website is is the ability to tag any of the business models with, you know, we can create all kinds of tags. So and um, one of my um, thinking there was that we could, you know, one use of that is that we could create tags about where things have been used or where we've seen them successfully implemented either by type of organization or by geographical um, location. So yeah, that's that's one possibility. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, that's I'm so happy to hear that you are having that discussion um, and yeah, love, love to keep working on it with you. Um, we are coming up to the um, end of the session. Um, I do very much want to thank everybody who, who um, came in um, for this and I've just in the last minute or so realized that there was loads of stuff going on on the chat that I wasn't aware of um, when I was sharing my screen so I will go through that um, and I can see that there's there's lots of people um, who've, who've joined the session um, which is amazing. Um, hopefully everyone has the um, link to the document that I shared that has uh, 
a whole variety of links in it, including to the Jamboard that we're using. Um, and so, or I've just posted it again in case anyone needs it. Um, if anybody is willing to um, to work with me on on any of this, then please put your details in the uh, table in that document. Um, although I can also see some messages about that in the chat and I will go through that and look those up. So thank you. Um, we're having another session tomorrow at a time that's more friendly for um, Latin America. Um, so we're going to be adding to these same Jamboard and, and documents. Um, and um, then I'll sort of share the output of that in the WhatsApp group. Um, so if you're wanting to, to keep up with how this conversation develops and yeah, I'm um, I'm just really excited that there's so much interest in this topic that I think is uh, is you know I obviously think it's important, but I'm glad other people to do too. And I'm really looking forward to um, working together to to figure out how to take this stuff forward. So that's everything from my side. I don't know if there's anything any announcements or anything coming from from Gig or if anyone has any final words. So I'll hand over now. Thanks. I can just I just put in the chat that the session tomorrow will be at 1700 and just wanted to say thanks again Anna for the brilliant work and for being so engaged and sharing it and uh, for hosting the session today and uh, looking forward to tomorrow so yeah thanks to everyone. Oh and perhaps we have more sessions coming up today. Uh, we have uh, a session at 2 p.m. CET on climates and climate crisis and more crises. And then we have a session on education today at, um, I think, 1530 uh, CET. So looking forward to seeing you for the other sessions today as well. Amazing. And it's lovely to see you all. <laughs> so thank you so much, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very See you much. See later. Bye. bye bye. I'm just staying in the room a minute to, to check, go through the chat. Yeah, yeah. Amazing, I'll just, I'll, yeah, I'll copy it all so that I have it. And then if you close it, it's fine. Thanks, Perhaps. thanks for the great documentation. I also try to pop the things I wrote into the chat in the Jamboard already, so hopefully make it easier. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah, tomorrow, um, but that, that was always announced, but I'm not sure if that reached you, Anna, just within the team, that it over the session, um, This at the same time we have our connective Christmas party, so I will probably just join really shortly, say hi, um, but Kirsten's going to be there as well, so that goes equally well and yeah thanks again so much for today okay thanks for letting me know and um, yeah her safe travels back to berlin thank you bye-bye bye-bye okay i'm just gonna paste what i copied and then Okay, I've got the chat, so I'm leaving the group now. Thank you. Don't bye bye. Thank you. I I stay for some more time. Oh, you Sorry? have a dog. Yeah, my yeah. dog can always tell when calls are finishing, and she comes up and gets excited. So she was just making a noise then, so I couldn't hear what you said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, enjoy the dog. Enjoy the dog Thank walking. You. Yeah. Bye bye. Congratulations. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.